LED lights have grown a long way since their initial inception for our industry. Now we have lights like this. This is the outside cream source with a row of little LED emitters like we're used to seeing, but now they are not only high efficiency, but they have these little lenses on them. I can actually show you what these little lenses look like. Here is the, uh, the spot version. Here is a flood version, which is a little bit conical that gives you a bigger spread of the light. But it's like having a lens on any light. You are controlling where all that light goes, and so you get great efficiency. This light is the equivalent of about a 575 watt HMI, which is a lot. This is, it only eats about 300 watts, but you can see it puts out a heck of a lot of light. Now at 10 feet, how much light? At 10 feet, I had about 525 foot candles spread over a six foot range. That's great efficiency, that's the spot version of the light. If you have some diffusion on it to soften the light, I put a, some 216, common diffusion, about eight inches in front, which was just enough to really soften out the light and hide any shadows whatsoever. At, I got a 10 foot spread, at 10 feet away, I got a 10 foot spread and so had 80 foot candles of light. So a great efficiency out of this light, which can be run off battery power, by the way. You can, this is run off AC power right now, but I can just plug it into a big block battery and be running around anywhere with it. It's small enough and light enough to put it onto a dolly if I wanted or stick it into a window for an effect. I have a full dimming control. There's even a remote that will plug into it to have a dimming control. It even has DMX connections, so if you had it up on a grid system. Other controls is that with this dimmer, right now I have it in what's called dual mode for exposure. So on this button, I could do it on the remote as well. I'll change the two brightnesses a little. I can switch between two brightnesses. That's, that's not going off. Let's see here, that, that's turned off. So I can actually control it with two different brightnesses. There's also a strobing mode, and I can change the speed of the strobe, and then a random mode with the strobe that you can then uh, shift the relative frequency between them. Another function on this light, which is really unique, is this box, which is the sync box for it. Plugs in right here, and then I can plug the remote into it. But what's important is this plug. That is where your Genlock connection goes, or black burst, from your video camera, because all of these lights, pretty much anything but just daylight or a tungsten light, all have uh, their own flicker. And that's just the way the technology works. They're pulsing. And if they're not synced properly to a camera, in particular a CMOS camera with a rolling shutter, which is what a lot of the new technology is, you can get either a flicker in your image or sort of a shifting wave of brightness where the top of the screen looks really bright and then it gets a dark band and it might pass through in your frame. Strange things like that where you then have to control the electronic shutter in your camera trying to get rid of it. And if you have multiple lights, they might do it at different rates and lots of strange phasing effects. Well, generally you don't have it with this light, but if you have a particular camera that's really sensitive to it, you plug in the sync box and then the light will be controlled by the camera will completely lock out any frequency issues because it will set itself to pulse based on the rate that the camera is shooting and so it will protect you in that way. And you can then go into a menu here and shift it if you want to create a weird effect or something, but you can create free, you can adjust the frequency either automatically or indirectly off of the control box. With a lot of adjustment available from this light, it is again the cream source by Outsight. Available here from Able Cinetech.